Howdy folks, it's uh, Friday, May 1st, and uh, it's been a while since my last video in the car. Uh, as you can see, I gave myself a haircut, groomed my beard a little bit, um, and I'm out, going out to get dinner. Gonna go get some Mary Brown's chicken again. And I just wanted to make this quick video while I'm on the road to discuss a couple of things. First and foremost though, I want to announce that the second episode of the Ammunition live stream is happening tonight at 10.30, but it's going to be on Irving Twin's channel. And I will be participating with Irving Twin in that live stream. So I will post a link in the description to his channel uh, and you can check that out and listen to us talk about another gun related video because as you know, or maybe you don't know, Justin Trudeau, Bill Blair and some hatchet faced bitch were sitting up at a table somewhere, presumably in Ottawa, talking about their uh, their ban on assault style military style weapon is how Justin termed it. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail, but as you can tell, I'm I'm a little annoyed by the whole thing, but we'll talk more about that tonight. But please, be sure to tune in to Irving Twins channel and uh, check out that video. Um, check out that live stream tonight, 10.30 on Irving Twins channel. But what I want to talk about today is Biden. Bad boy Biden. Biden's a bad boy. And you know, it. I've been watching a lot of people comment on the whole Tara Reid scandal with regards to uh, Joe Biden. That's really loud from the wind. Uh, the whole Tara Reid scandal with regards to uh, Joe Biden. And um, it's, it's, one, it's unconscionable and shows the pure political um, snobbery on the part of Pelosi and Stacey Abrams and these other people who when Justice Kavanaugh, of course, was up for nomination to the Supreme Court, uh, you know, they were all, uh, we have to believe Christine Blasey Ford. She's a, she's made credible accusations, right? Credible accusations that she couldn't remember uh, details of, that couldn't be corroborated, that she uh, had no contemporaneous uh, corroboration from from uh, witnesses or people who even knew her at the time, she never talked to anybody about it at the time. The people she did try and put up said, yeah, no, I, I was never there, that never happened. Um, but now Joe Biden has these accusations against him and, uh, and they're like, well, I, I believe Joe Biden. He's a good person. Uh-huh. Look, Tim Pool has made a point of he doesn't like these 20, 30 year old allegations coming to light and then us, you know, running with them. And I, to that, I kind of agree. We can't give these things that much um, credence given the fact that they're, they're so old, they're so ancient and there's, there's no way to prove it. One, the statute of limitations on sexual assault, I think have long passed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there's nothing criminal going on there, but um, but this isn't about a criminal case or even charges brought up against Biden or that will be brought up against Biden. Um, this is solely about Biden's perception and how he looks, right? Now the people who support Biden or defend Biden are saying, well, no, she was a Bernie operative or she was a supporter of Bernie, and so this is all political. Yeah, well, Blasey Ford was a supporter of Hillary, right? So what's what's your point? What's the difference? The thing that really irritates me about Biden going being the presumptive nominee in the Democrat Party is the very fact that the Democrats, the DNC, they had a chance to put up a candidate who was an actually a counter, a foil, to Donald Trump. But instead they put up this guy, Joe Biden, who is a, you know, a pale, demented clone of everything they accuse Trump of. They've accused Trump of, of uh, 
sexual assault and uh, deviance towards women. Biden's done it too. And as a matter of fact, Biden's on camera doing it. Fondling little girls and being completely physically inappropriate with women, right? Uh, they accuse Trump of, uh, of using his uh, political power for personal gain. Biden's done that. Just looking at Hunter Biden's situation with not only Ukraine, but China as well. They, they, uh, <laughs> they wanted to impeach him over quid pro quo. Biden is on camera doing a quid pro quo with uh, talking about his quid pro quo, pr pr quid pro quo with, with Ukraine. Uh, Biden's been in, been uh, implicated in uh, fr fraud accounts and uh, and and all sorts of shady political deals back when he was uh, a senator uh, to the benefit of credit card companies and uh, and friends who could uh, enrich him. So this is the thing, and and now you're saying that this is the perfect person to go up against Trump he is absolutely everything that they accuse Trump of being and I'm like you people are so blind and short-sighted and stupid I, I just don't understand what they're thinking I, I mean here's my prediction Trump is gonna win handily in November whether there's a debate or no debate if he goes up against Biden he's gonna win handily the there's the enthusiasm gap, of course, but there's also this, this plain and simple point that what the DNC has decided to do is put up a guy who is exemplifies everything they've accused Trump of being. And what they seem to ignore is the fact that all the shit they threw at Trump, all the things they accused him of, just washed off like water off a duck's back. He's Teflon Don, as they say. So... How is it that you think this is the best candidate, the candidate that can beat Donald Trump? They should have taken a lesson from 2016 and realized, okay, this is a whole new ball game. Politics as we've known it for 30, 40 years, it doesn't work anymore. We can have the media on our side. It doesn't seem to matter because the internet, by and large, is on Trump's side. All the, all the deplorables and the shit posters. And the ones who are making the spicy memes, they're all on Trump's side. Uh, and, and you know, George Bush said it to Matt Lauer, I guess, uh, back shortly after he left office. He says, well, you guys don't matter much anymore. And you can, you can see Matt Lauer die inside when he was talking about, you know, how the Internet is so much more influential in politics now. And, they, and you know, even though they have Facebook and Google and YouTube and everybody in their pocket, in the DNC's pocket, they they still can't seem to make it work because the narrative that these tech giants are just as bad as the mainstream media in terms of shilling for the DNC and shilling for the, the, the left wing hive mind. Uh, you know, it's already, it's already out there. It's already resonated with people. They realize it. They know that big tech and the tech giants, the people invol involved in new media and uh, and in uh, social media, they're all scumbags too, just like everybody on CNN and NBC and ABC and, and uh, MSNBC and all of them. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's still a long way away. We're still in this kind of tumultuous time with regards to the the uh, the Rona, but uh, but there's signs showing that the economy is going to get back to, to normal, that things are going to open back up again. And if, if my suspicion is right, if my intuition is right, the economy is going to like hurdle back. It's going to come back like a meteor. It's going to, it's going to boom like it never boomed before. And I could see the Dow going up above, well above where it was before this whole thing uh, started. And people will be going back to work, and people will be thankful, and and uh, 
And what's in the narrative right now is that these Democrat governors and these Democrat run cities are the ones that are keeping people from working and keeping people from getting back to their normal lives. Donald Trump is handling the federal thing and you know, by and large, he's done a halfway decent job. Uh, I mean, apart from all his, uh, his gaffes, but all told, he, he's, put in, he's put people in the task force that seem to instill a bit of confidence or instill some confidence in, in, the, um, in the public. So it's going to be, it's going to come back and it's going to be seen largely because Trump handled it for the most part well. Um, and that the Democrats didn't, whether it be, you know, locally or statewide or nationally. I mean, Pelosi's a total schmuck. She just keeps looking worse and worse. I almost feel bad for her more than I feel bad for Biden when, when they put her up in front of a camera. Anyway, uh, that's about all I want to say about it. The Democrats had a chance, you know. They could have put up somebody like Andrew Yang or Tulsi Gabbard. But one, they have this, this blood feud with Tulsi Gabbard for what she did in 2016 in terms of exposing the, uh, the corruption in the DNC and how they were basically, uh, you know, killing any chance of Bernie getting the nomination. And they, they, they basically are just dismissive of Andrew Yang. They don't feel he's got the name, brand, name recognition. Problem is, he went on Joe Rogan and he resonated with a lot of people. Now, I don't like either one of those candidates. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm more partial to Gabbard than I am to Yang. Uh, but even still, I'm not a big fan of either one of them because at the end of the day, they're Democrats. And uh, I think the Democrat worldview is the wrong worldview. That's uh, that's my personal take on it. Anyway, I'm just about done. I'm going to go get some food at Mary Brown's. And I appreciate you all for watching. And please, once again, remember tonight at 10.30 on Irving Twins Channel, Ammunition Episode 2 will be airing. Uh, so tune in and watch it. We'll probably go for an hour, two hours or whatever. And just gab about the most recent uh, shit show that is the Liberal Government's Federal Gun Ban. And uh, I appreciate you all for checking out my channel, like, share, and subscribe, and all that jazz, and have yourselves a great weekend. Thanks very much.